Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the UJT relaxation oscillator or sweep circuit or time based generator. Okay, these are the free running oscillators also there. So different names of the are there for this UJT relaxation oscillator. If you see the circuit diagram, already I told you how the symbolic representation of UJT is there. So UJT is having three terminals. One emitter and two base terminals. This is base two and it is base one. So there is a resistor at base two and VBB, which is RB2, and one more resistor is existed between RB uh, base one and ground, which is RB1. Now, at the emitter, we are having, from the emitter only, we are going to take the output. So, at the emitter, we are having a resistor in the upward direction, like with uh, another biasing supply like VYY, which is slightly different from VBB. And from emitter, we are having a capacitor through which the entire operation is going to take place. Here we are measuring the output voltage, VSR, sweep voltage, output voltage, and it is capacitor C. Okay, so this is the circuit diagram of UJT relaxation oscillator or sweep circuit using UJT. Hope you understand how we have got the circuit diagram. See, this is the symbolic representation first we have taken. And there are two resistors existed from base 2 to VBB and base 1 to ground. Okay. And from emitter to one resistor R is there. R is between VYY and this particular output terminal nothing but emitter. And from emitter to ground we are having the capacitor. See sometimes we can equate the VB, VYY and VBB. There is no problem. Suppose if you are having any confusion then you can equate VYY and VBB. Otherwise, keep it separately because VYY decides the maximum amplitude. VYY decides the maximum peak amplitude of the sweep voltage. Suppose if you are taking a sweep amplitude like this and it goes down, okay, charging and discharging periods we are going to see. So, this amplitude is decided by the value where we are giving at VYY. Okay, suppose this voltage I am taking it as 12 volts and this voltage I am taking it as 10 volts, then the capacitor has to charge up to 10 volts only, not 12 volts. Suppose if this terminal is connected directly to VBB, then it has to charge up to 12 volts. Okay, so this factor output amplitude that we can decide with the VYY voltage without disturbing the biasing voltage. That is the main aim why we have taken separate VYY voltage. Okay, now let us see the operation. Initially, let us assume that the transistor UJT transistor is in off state. Let us assume that it is in off state. See what happens when it is in off state. And assume also the capacitor is initially uncharged. The voltage across capacitor is zero. See, I am drawing the output waveform. Listen carefully, this is the time axis and it is output voltage I am drawing. Here there is no input voltage. Input voltage is there but these are DC voltages. We are getting output AC signal. Okay, so that's why it is known as oscillator. Now, initially the voltage across capacitor is zero. Initially the capacitor is uncharged. Voltage across capacitor is zero. Now we are assuming that the UJT is in off state. UJT is in off state. When it is in off state, the current coming from this resistance directly goes towards the capacitor. It will not go into the emitter junction because this is open circuited. Okay, so the capacitor has a chance to charge through the capacitance through the resistance. So capacitor charges, charges. What is the maximum voltage in that path? VYY. So capacitor has to charge up to VYY. It charges like this. 
and it has to charge up to V Y Y. This is the maximum voltage. Capacitor will never charge up to V Y Y because the voltage across capacitor parallelly applied at the input of this junction. This base to emitter junction. Okay, so when the voltage across capacitor reaches this junction voltage, the transistor comes into on state. The transistor comes into on state. So when the transistor comes into on state, capacitor will never charge. It has to discharge through this path, through the RB1 resistance, through the RB1 resistance. So when it reaches the peak voltage, when it reaches the peak voltage, peak voltage, what is the peak voltage now? Peak voltage is the cut-in voltage of the transistor. Peak voltage is nothing but cut-in voltage of the transistor. So when it reaches the peak voltage, immediately it turns back and tries to discharge up to minimum voltage like zero. It tries to discharge up to zero, but it will not go beyond valley voltage. This is v v this is the minimum voltage required for the ujt to turn off again okay so when the transistor again turns off what happens capacitor has again charging path so again it charges so again charges but it charges up to only peak value again discharges again charges and discharges so the capacitor will oscillate between two voltages like vp and vv peak value and valley voltage peak voltage and valley voltage these are the two upper and lower limits of this capacitor to charge so how can you define vp now vp is nothing but peak voltage peak voltage or the minimum voltage required for the transistor to turn on and valley voltage is the minimum voltage required for the transistor to turn off so that's why the capacitor charges and discharges between these two voltages okay so the entire amplitude we are taking it as something like vs okay now we already i already told you in the beginning of the time based generators there are two time periods sorry there are two time periods in this uh, time based generator output one is sweep time another one is retrace time so from here to here we can say see why we am taking from here is except first cycle the remaining all cycles are having this this particular waveform okay so we can call this period as transient period and the remaining are stable suppose if you are taking only this for this for second waveform second cycle so this is sweep time and this is retrace time so it is sweep time it is retrace time retrace time is very very less compared to sweep time okay in the waveform just i have uh, shown you both are equal to understand but uh, the retrace time is very small compared to the sweep time okay and the overall time period is t so we can write t is equal to ts plus tr overall time period t is equal to sweep time plus retrace time okay so now let us calculate the expression or frequency of oscillations of this one okay for our simplicity i am taking one peak here Okay, this is valley voltage, this is peak voltage, this is TR as I said, this is TS, okay, and maximum voltage is this one and it has to charge up to VYY. Let us consider this instant as zero. And this is up to TS from here to here it is TR. Now 0 less than T less than TS output voltage Vs is equal to how can you write the capacitor is charging when the capacitor charges we are, we are having one 
basic and standard formula which is v final minus v final minus v initial into e power minus t by tau. So that is equal to what is the v final value v y y the capacitor has to charge up to v y y minus initial value is v v into e power minus t by tau is nothing but resistance into capacitance here in the circuit we are having this resistance and capacitance this is vs so at t is equal to ts during this period this is the nature of the output waveform at t is equal to ts particularly we are having output vs is equal to vp okay so vp is equal to we can write it as vyy minus vyy minus vv into e power minus ts by r into c okay just if you manipulate and simplify this one you will be having ts is equal to i am not saying because you have already done many uh, types of this expression in the previous videos so ts is equal to you will be having rs into natural logarithm of vyy minus vv divided by vyy minus vp simply just we are taking this onto the left hand side onto the right hand side and manipulating the this we will come okay it will come now so frequency of oscillations f is equal to frequency of oscillation f is equal to 1 by so we know T is equal to Ts plus Tr. I already told you Ts is very high period compared to Tr. Where Ts is very high compared to Tr. So we can neglect we can neglect Tr. Okay. So F is equal to now 1 by T that is equal to 1 by Ts because Tr is equal to 0 neglected. So that is equal to 1 by what is Ts? Rc ln of Vyy minus Vv divided by Vyy minus Vp. Okay. Now see Vv value voltage is very small. Okay. In the waveform it is shown something like it is having some voltage but value voltage is generally very small which is just required to turn the transistor off below that the transistor is set to be in off state during retracing period so as vy vv is very small compared to vyy we can neglect this vv so as vv is very small compared to vyy uh, we can write f is equal to 1 by rc ln of Vyy by Vyy minus Vp. Okay. So here these are the assumptions we should do. Now again if you Vyy goes to the denominator 1 minus Vp by Vyy. So 1 by Rc ln of 1 by 1 minus Vp by Vyy. Okay, so already we know in the previous video I told you peak voltage Vp is equal to V gamma plus eta Vbb. Okay, neglect V gamma because V gamma is very small. As V gamma is very small compared to Vbb, so Vp is equal to eta Vbb. Vb Eta is eta VBB. But uh, here what is VBB? In our case, VBB is nothing but it is VYY. Because the capacitor has to charge up to VYY only, not VBB. That's why peak voltage when you are considering, it should be VYY. So it is like eta into VYY. Therefore, VP is equal to eta into VYY. See? When you substitute eta into Vyy here, eta into Vyy by Vyy. So Vyy get cancelled, we will be having only eta here. 
hope you understand so therefore frequency of oscillations is equal to 1 by rc ln of 1 by 1 minus eta this is the frequency of oscillations for the ujt relaxation oscillator or sweep circuit or time based generator okay thank you